And, and, and Doc said it right earlier. It did not happen by accident. This wasn't something that just... I mean, they're not just moving here because we got great live music and barbecue, okay? <laughs> that didn't hurt. That didn't hurt. They're coming here because we have created a climate where people know that they can risk their capital. They can risk their capital and have a good chance of a return on their investment. Doc, they know they can come here and have a quality of life that they can't have in other states. They know that they can come here and find the American dream. A dream that our founding fathers truly understood. Is they, you know, I tell folks that there are some there are some clear things that they need to do in Washington, D.C. They need to stop spending all the money. Stop spending all the money. That would be a really good start right there. Read the Constitution. But there ought to be a test. Anybody want to be a United States Congressman or a United States Senator needs to read the United States Constitution. Understand what the Tenth Amendment says. That the federal government was formed by the states to be an agent of the states, not the other way around. Let me tell you, if, if, if Washington would just follow the Tenth Amendment, it would be an amazingly different country that we live in today. The idea that we, we need to be listening to Washington, D.C. telling us how to run our public schools. How to, what was the Department of Energy created some 20-something years ago? What, for what reason? Because we had a dependence on foreign oil. And they created the Department of Energy so that we could be independent of any foreign oil. Worked like a champ, didn't it? <laughs> I don't know what the budget is today, but I'll bet you it's well into the billions of dollars. Uh, and, and, and we are more and more and more dependent on people who really don't like us. I happen to think the future of our country is at stake. And the work that we do collectively over the next 18 to 24 months will make a decision about where America's going and what we're going to look like and whether it's a country that our children are going to inherit that they can live the promises that we've lived. There are young men and women around the world today putting their lives on the line for those freedoms. Doc, I know you uh, are one of those. Dr. Charlie Clark, ladies and gentlemen, let me just stand up just a second before we say thank you, sir. Serving his fellow man, putting his life on the line for all of us. Tell him thank you before you get out of here today. Thank you to each one of those young men and women who put their hand on the Bible and held their right hand up and said they were going to defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States, defend our freedom against enemies foreign. And domestic. We have a great country. We have a great state. And if Americans will again stand up, if the silent majority will no longer accept, well, it's just the way they've always did it, and there's not anything that we can do about it. Let me tell you, if we will stand up and speak with one voice, that Americans want their Constitution back, that Americans want their country back, this country will be great again. And Texas will help lead that charge. God bless you. Thank you all for